Hello and welcome to 5MI Weekly. This week, let's talk about the G-Spot. It's often said a woman's sexuality is a mystery. Despite being repeatedly said, this statement is false. What is true is people make a woman's sexuality a mystery by making things up about it. Today, let's make a woman's sexuality less mysterious and more authentic by removing something people have been making up about a woman's sexuality for nearly 75 years, the G-spot. Ironically, the people to blame for making up the G-spot are people who have historically suppressed women's sexuality, specifically those following the Freudian psychoanalytic perspective within psychology, and people who have historically empowered women's sexuality, specifically those following a scientific perspective on sexuality. The G-spot is short for Grafenberg spot and is named after Ernst Grafenberg. Ernst Grafenberg was a successful 20th century gynecologist and researcher who sought empirical evidence for the misconstrued Freudian psychoanalytic idea of women's authentic and mature orgasms needing to be associated with the vagina, not the clitoris. A woman with only clitoris orgasms is hunting for a male partner who would help her to achieve the fulfillment of her erotic dreams and desires. Ernst Grafenberg, 1950. Grafenberg focused on the urethra and upon anecdotal examinations of his patients, found the area surrounding the urethra, which he referred to as the urethral erotic zone, was more sensitive than other areas of the vagina. Certain it is that this area in the anterior vaginal wall is a primary erotic zone, perhaps more important than the clitoris which got its erotic supremacy only in the age of necking. Ernst Grafenberg, 1950. From his patient observations, Grafenberg argued, as did the other Freudian-based psychoanalysts of the time, women should focus on the vagina in general and the area surrounding the urethra in particular to achieve mature orgasms thereby decreasing the probability of becoming hysterical or hypersexual or depressed or anxious from having clitoral orgasms or no orgasms at all. The anterior wall of the vagina along the urethra is the seat of a distinct erotogenic zone and has to be taken into account more in the treatment of female sex deficiency. Ernst Grafenberg, 1950. Interestingly, Grafenberg never named the urethral erotic zone after himself. That is, he never named it the Grafenberg spot or G-spot. More than 30 years after Grafenberg's observations, a group of scientists reporting a case study of a woman who was able to ejaculate when stimulated within the vagina named the area being stimulated the Grafenberg spot. One of the scientists within this group was Dr. Beverly Whipple. Dr. Whipple became the G-Spot's main protagonist. And throughout the 1980s and into the 21st century, she made it her mission to tell the public about the G-Spot's existence. Dr. Whipple's mission appears noble, showing women where their physical seat of pleasure is, if not for one problem, the lack of empirical evidence for the existence of the G-spot. For example, Dr. Whipple's research immediately following her case study example, the G-spot, failed to replicate finding a common area within women's vaginas that causes orgasms. When she examined 11 women by palpitating their entire vaginas in a clockwise fashion, Dr. Whipple found responses to this stimulation of the anterior vaginal wall in only four of them, 
but instead of interpreting these data as evidence for the vagina being an erogenous zone for only a minority of women, Dr. Whipple explained away the seven women who did not respond and concluded the four women who did respond was evidence for the existence of the G-spot. Together, Grafenberg's anecdotal observations of his patients and Whipple's studies of only five women form the empirical birth of the G-spot. And not surprisingly, the basis of all the myths, mysteries, and misinformation about it. Since Grafenberg and Whipple's initial studies, there has been loads of conjecture supporting the existence of the G-spot. But there has been no replicated empirical studies demonstrating a single spot within the vagina causing most women to orgasm. Repeat, there is no replicated scientific evidence for a single spot within the vagina causing most women to orgasm. Instead, most women find a variety of areas within the vagina to be more sensitive than other areas of the vagina and not necessarily orgasmic. In fact, less than 33% of women report being able to have an orgasm with vaginal stimulation alone. To put this percentage in perspective, more than 90% of women report being able to have an orgasm with clitoral stimulation alone. The areas within the vagina women perceive as being more sensitive are typically reported within the anterior portions. But this is not saying a single area of the vagina causes orgasm, what the G-spot hypothesis states. Instead, this is merely saying, as with the rest of the body, different areas of the vagina are perceived as being more sensitive than others. These sensitive areas of the body are called erogenous zones and are controlled by a combination of neurology, that is, our somatosensory cortex, and experiences, our learning and conditioning. Interestingly, despite arguing for a single area of the vagina causing orgasms, both Grafenberg and Whipple recognize the variability of vaginal sensitivity. Hmm. For example, in the same paper arguing for a single vaginal area of eroticism, Grafenberg states, innumerable erotogenic spots are distributed all over the body from where sexual satisfaction can be elicited. There are so many that we can almost say that there is no part of the female body which does not give sexual response. The partner has only defined the erotogenic zones. Ernst Grafenberg, 1950. And Whipple, while still believing in a single area of the vagina being most sensitive, the Grafenberg spot is a sensitive area felt through the anterior vaginal wall. It is located about halfway between the back of the pubic bone and the cervix, along the course of the urethra and near the neck of the bladder. Her data and words tell otherwise. For example, one of her own studies found women reported being highly sensitive in their vaginas at the 12 o'clock position, that is the medial position of the anterior wall of the vagina, and the 11 o'clock position, the 1 o'clock position, the 4 o'clock position, and the 8 o'clock position. And she's written, women do not have to fit one model of sexual response. There are many reported sexual responses in women. Women have been socialized to believe and accept traditional views about their sexual responses and pleasure. And often what they have been taught is different from what they experience. For women, the whole body can be sensual and sexual. And women have the potential to experience sensual and sexual pleasure from their thoughts, feelings, beliefs, fantasies, and dreams. Women need to be encouraged to feel good about the variety of ways they experience sensual and sexual pleasure without setting up specific goals, such as finding the G-spot or experiencing female ejaculation. 
MRI imaging, sonography, and immunohistochemical techniques have physiologically confirmed no one area of the vagina all women have in common is any more sensitive than any other area of the vagina. Simply put, biologically and physically, there is no evidence for the G-spot. World-renowned Australian urologist Dr. Helen O'Connell of the Royal Melbourne Hospital has a physiological explanation for women's reports of experiencing vaginal orgasms and the loads of conjecture about the G-spot, despite there being no physical evidence for the G-spot. She states, when the anterior portions of the vagina are stimulated during vaginal penetration, with a penis or otherwise, so too are the internal parts of the clitoris. There is a direct relationship between the roots of the clitoris and the erectile tissue of the clitoral bulbs and the distal urethra and vagina. The vaginal wall is, in fact, the clitoris. If you lift the skin off of the vagina on the side walls, you get the bulbs of the clitoris, triangular masses of erectile tissue. Hence, the G-spot is anything but a spot on the vagina. But instead, the internal parts of the clitoris engorged with blood during arousal. So what does all this mean? It means a lot. It means women have multiple erogenous zones throughout their bodies in general and throughout their vulvas in particular. With these erogenous zones being controlled by the somatosensory cortex of the brain and a woman's personal experiences. It means a woman's erogenous zone should be discovered through exploration of her own basic anatomy and through being curious about her own psychological and physical self. It means we should stop using the term G-spot because there is no single spot within the vagina that leads to orgasm for all women. It means we should stop using the term G-spot because it is an imaginary women's body part with a man's name and women do not need any more men's labels on their bodies. It means systematic information presented about the G-spot leads to women thinking something is wrong with them because they cannot find their imaginary G-spots. This has negative effects on a woman's self-esteem and self-concept and may even lead to the physical mutilation of the vagina. For example, a medical procedure called the G-shot injects collagen into the anterior wall of the vagina to enhance the G-spot. Physicians all over the world are currently performing the G-shot. This procedure requires women to come back every few months for these injections. And surprise, surprise, there are no hmm. published double-blind placebo-controlled studies about the effectiveness of the G-shot. Lastly, it means... The G-spot is reinforcing the millennial-old myth about the vagina being the physical center of a woman's sexuality. And if it is not, then the woman must be disturbed, hysterical, and abnormal. Masking itself as empowering, the imaginary G-spot suppresses a woman's sexuality. True empowerment is recognizing the vagina is neither necessary nor sufficient for a woman's sexuality.